Obrigado.
What about the um, uh, anthropogenic impact? Human impact. Did you notice any any uh, human human impacts? Yes, uh, my, my my friend uh, found uh, a fork, a metallic fork. Rubbish. Yes. 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 Right. Yes. Yes. Somebody saw a go on. Yeah. Uh, in our case, uh, in our shore or particular area, that was uh, so smooth. Uh, besides the, the other areas, according to the, the other areas, and we, a guy came and uh, he told about a story about five years ago, uh, a man come and try to smooth it, the area, so this is the biggest anthropogenic effects, and there are some uh, small pool, but um, it, it was very different characteristics. Yeah, than the other huge, areas. That's a huge impact because yes. we're sure we're talking about something very big. Yeah. So a small, a small area flattened me yes. by mechanical means yes. on a shore which is not very big is a significant impact. Yes. And I did not know that until you told me. Yeah. Until you told me. Yes. I, I just expected the impact was like small ones. So <laughs> that's another important <laughs> What you're talking about the, the flat the flat area, yes. okay, and um, for the benefit of the other. So what happened was that someone, okay, someone who wanted to flatten the shore, you know, that there were some parts with rocks sticking out, that was not convenient, okay, because this person wanted to place these scooters, jet scooters, okay. So he wanted an area that is flat to place his jet scooter. So he came down with a mechanical shovel and he scraped away the jutting parts of the rock to flatten out this area, okay, an area perhaps uh, the size of this room. Okay. Illegally. Yeah. Illegally. But, okay, so he did that and we are saying that that is an impact, an adverse impact. But why? How can you say that? How can you say that it has an adverse impact? Because the resilience uh, is not so rapid. Sorry, the, the resilience, I don't know what the word in English. Is. Resilience, so the resilience yes. of species, you say? Of species is not so rapid, so it's a clear zone. Uh, so she couldn't participate, participate again to the equilibrium of uh, ecosystems. But eventually, eventually, there will be an equilibrium, no? It will take time, but if, eventually. If, if you block uh, uh, parts, you block this equilibrium. It's called, uh, in another direction, and uh, get a new equilibrium. You don't know if it's a new equilibrium or not. I believe. Okay. So, what would you expect, for example? Would you expect to be less abundance, perhaps less species, yes, and perhaps, perhaps uh, less uh, um, you know, we less uh, food for for other species, and uh, it could be a, a chain reaction. Yeah. But why? What has changed? I mean, the rock is still there. The shore yes, is still there. For, for example, for some zones, there can be uh, nursery zones. Ah, no okay. So the surface topography has changed. Yes. So the structure, habitat structure has been changed. Mm -hmm. Now it's smooth. Mm -hmm. Perhaps there are less yeah. um, small nooks and crannies mm -hmm. where the animals, like Bellarafe, can seek refuge. And I'm sure you noticed that lots and lots of animals were there, but they were always, or they tried to be, hidden as possible. So if there's a crack, or there's a pit, or there is a cavity, that's where you find them. Don't find them on the rock. Why? Why do they look for hiding places? And it's not predation, no. No, what? Get away by the waves. One liter of water, you know what one liter is, not a lot of water, that's one kilogram. Right? Now imagine that you get all these liters of water hitting you. That's a lot of force. So that's what the main uh, factor affecting life on the shore is. It's resisting wave action. Predation and that, yeah, but that's secondary. You have that's your first problem. So anything, anything that you can do to avoid getting the full force of the waves, you do it. So you live in crevices, you live under hole, but right? I mean, if you are mobile, like a crab, a crab is mobile. And what do you do? Or one of those big snails, those who told me, or Selenians, the big snails. Right? How do they survive? In the teeth. In the teeth. In the small teeth. Yeah. 
So what do they do? When it's rough weather, what do, you, what do they do? Yes. And when it's, uh, when it's not rough weather, then they come up. Right? So it's behavior. You need to be either stuck down, like vermidids, like limpids, like uh, tunnels, the barnacle, uh, chitons, these are all stuck down, the sucker or something. Or if you're not stuck down, like a crab, crab is not stuck down, okay, then you need to have a behavior uh, adaptation, which is, as soon as it gets too rough, find a hiding place and you know, wait until, and wait, grab the rock and wait until the weather is calm, then come out when it's calm. So you've got both morphological adaptations and you've got behavioral adaptations. Okay? So, so you agree that the shore environment is a very harsh environment to live in, right? Exposure to waves, um, in the middle of summer, very high temperature, direct sunlight. In winter, you can, you can have um, uh, um, ice forming, thin ice layers on, on, the, on the shore. Okay, so problems of desiccation and cold and, and, and all sorts of things. May I ask a question? In, in, in our particular area, uh, you said uh, black holes uh, on the rocks is, uh, provides nutrition to nutri nutrient uh, for, for algae, for example. No? no? no those are, um, those are uh, phosphate nodules yeah. and it's in a form which is not soluble. Ah, okay. Not so okay. No, so, so it has no significance in terms of nutrients to the algae. The rock, the rock does not dissolve, it dissolves very, very, very slowly, it will not affect the algae okay. at all. Okay. okay? And that kind of uh, habitat where you've got the phosphate nodule, that's a geological structure. Okay. That's by accident it happens to be at sea level. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are very few places where it is at sea level. Mm -hmm. right? So it's just a kind of rock. And uh, finally, for the shore, you also have trampling people like us today, okay, mm -hmm. moving over the animals, okay, so you have lots of trampling, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. And I, I think also diving can have some negative influence to coastal area ecosystems because uh, a lot of people don't have special uh, technique or underwater diving and they can damage some maybe um, not good buoyancy. Yeah. Yes, no, the course, it happens good. underwater, but, yes. but on the shore, on the shore, um, it's easier because everyone can go on the shore. More underwater. Uh, uh, no yes. Okay, so now let's move to the subject today. Um, obviously, it was not easy for you, I know. You have realized that working with the transit, because you are not divers, you have to do it on the surface. And it's not easy seeing things on the seabed, even if they are just two meters or three meters below you. It's not easy to identify them. It's not easy to see boundaries. So I'm sure that you appreciate the difficulty of doing a transect on the surface. It is not really the right way to do a transect. Okay, and we usually do it on the seabed using scuba diving. So the diver is really close to the seabed that it can take notes and and the animals and the plants better, take samples and so on. What is your assessment of the um, habitats there for the subject? Uh, did, we, did you find all four habitats? Um, did we record all four habitats? Not everyone, right? Okay. Who had the four habitats, habitat types in the transit? You managed to record the four. You also. Okay, again, similar to what we had on the shore. You get some parts where you have high heterogeneity, right, heterogeneity, with patches of different habitats, and other places where maybe you had just two habitats, or even one, so, so even this applies also what applies to the shore, as you go out along the headland, and also as you go out into deeper waters, okay, you have this variation, this change in the uh, occurrence and spatial distribution of, um, uh, of different uh, habitats. So, if you were to 
all the groups to your data. So you had essentially transects every given distance, right? So you, you had many transects, you had nine at least transects. If you were to um, uh, pull the data, put them, put, put put them together, together, okay? What do you think can be done uh, with this data? Um, can you, for example, perhaps produce a map? Mm -hmm. huh? Okay, so um, this could be one, uh, one exercise that can come out of um, uh, such, such a session. Such a, um, plotting um, the spatial extent of different habitats in the, in the study area. Uh, what about of these four habitat types, the seagrass, autopenicality, berry sand, and cobbles and cuddles? You recorded uh, the um, uh, occurrence of uh, different species, right, and abundance, as you did for the shore. Did you arrive at the conclusion of perhaps which one is, suppose, the highest diversity or and which one is the most abundant? What are your conclusions? In our case, we had uh, the, the first uh, starting with the doctor side, and that was lot of sharp, sharp phrase. And yes. uh, about, I think, seven mm -hmm. meters depth. So the other stratum with pebbles or with sand and with Posidonia, it was not easy to see the, the species okay. that okay. there were such. Uh, okay. So in so our case, no for sure, the, the no most. Uh, <coughs> the stratum that had the most pieces was the first one, yes. but okay. it probably yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. But uh, also Posidonia is supposed to have many species that we couldn't okay. see. So, so you are making the important point that you cannot really come out with this assessment. Of course, the species richness, the number of different species of fish, was it most largest in the photophilic algae or not? No, yeah, no. Okay. no. where was it? Indeed. Cobbles and pebbles. In the cobbles and pebbles. There were more fish species of cobbles and pebbles than there were in the photophilic algae and the, the seagrass and the mosasonic. Okay. Actually, we saw uh, the hard reach where they were uh, one, maybe one or two species, but uh, more than. Yes. Uh, and in also for for, for the thick algae uh, area, um, there were also a parasite to the sea orchid. It was very common. It was so sharp as your area. So there are parasites. Uh -huh. In our group, we saw the rich bundle between. The and things going on then, so food, shelter, nursing areas, okay? But is this the same for all habitats? Is it the same? Is this the same for all habitats? Same um, food, uh, or food, same refuge? Is this equal for the different habitats? Or it changes from one habitat to the other? This service that it provides? All habitats provide food. All have, been, all, no, no, all have inverted. Uh, on the surface, uh -huh. uh, the uh, micro body, uh -huh. uh, the, question, the question is, each of these habitats provides uh, goods and services. Okay. Think so? You think so? <laughs> yes. They all provide services. They all provide food for something or other. Are they equal in their contribution? Do they provide the same amount of food? No. no. Okay. Now, if no, some have provide more than others. Yes? yes. Which? Why? <laughs> you just, you got to justify your answer. Yeah. Don't just say. We, we are trying to arrive here, so this is it. Because uh, it creates a micro habitat for many species, so there are many <coughs> biotic animals or plants that live. What we refer to as structural complexity, yeah. right? The habitat that is structurally complex, yes. like so seagrass, like so algal habitat has many microhabitats and therefore supports a higher biodiversity. So your rock, your rock with its algae and bacteria felt on it, 
is provide the food for grazers. But if you're looking at Posidonia, you have the leaf, you have the shrimp, you put the rhizome, you put the sediment trap between the rhizomes. The right? And then, yes, the mat, that's the, the mass of rhizomes and sediment on which the, the thing is coming out of. Right? So you can see that, that the structure is much more complicated. So the types of food and the, 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 uh, the, type, the types and um, the uh, microhabitats are much more uh, abundant than you have on a rock, which is very, very much the same. Do you understand? That's, that, that's, that's the habitat architecture. Like uh, our churches are baroque, <laughs> lots of decorations, and then you get the neoclassic and they're very simple, just smooth walls. Uh, the, 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 Uh, and uh, the of the Pusidonia Finca uh, on, on the Pusidonia Finca uh, and... And polypids as well, huh? Yes. There are polypids on the surface. Yes. Is there a polypids? Yes. Q. 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 Does the um, uh, anthropogenic impact did you note any anthropogenic impacts on the subterranean habitats? Perhaps again, it was difficult to assess this because you are not close to the sea bed, so they have been. Did you see, for example, any angling on Posidonia or moorings, concrete blocks, maybe? Did you see anyone? So, the ropes. Did you saw? Did you saw? Big block? Okay. Okay, so what happens when someone puts a big block of concrete on the Posidonia? What would be the impact, the adverse impact, what happens? There were changes, just like the boundaries of the system. It would be like a minimum cost of But other effects could be that now we have an elevated structure, and because of water movement, okay, water movement um, coming against the mooring, it will start changing the microenvironment around the mooring, and because of that, Perhaps the Posidonia is also affected. So you don't have just this area, you may have a larger area, okay, with this um, modified uh, habitat in between. Worse, if the mooring has a chain, okay, and the chain is lying, usually it doesn't go straight up, but it is lying on the mooring and on the Posidonia, when the boat ties to the mooring, the chain starts moving around, around, so sometimes the area impacted by the chain is larger than the area taken by the mooring. So sometimes, when you have these many moorings, like you have in these bays, okay, you add all these areas together and you find that a large area of Posidonia has been affected in person. Okay, with these moorings. Anchoring, same thing or worse. Anchoring, you get, you get a boat, comes in this morning, puts down the anchor, rips off the Posidonia shoes, there is the chain, it's also moving on the Posidonia, right? Ripping off the shoes. Then he takes up the anchor, moves to the next bay for a, another swim, puts down the anchor, repeat, here, there, and the floor. And you come here, and you go down, and you're seeing the fish, and the river. that's already a very basic um, uh, service that's being provided. But we can draw a whole list, because, for example, Posidonia, we mentioned that Posidonia traps sediment, okay, so it reduces turbidity, the water quality. You have the effect on water quality. So these living plants, apart from Posidonia, so the algae, are taking up the nutrients which are ending up from the boats and from the road and so on, so they are cleaning the water and you can go on and on um, reducing the um, uh, wave action, Posidonia, leads of coastal erosion, you can, you can draw up a very long list. A list that will more convince politicians than uh, us about and this is sometimes more effective than good.
Concerning uh, biodiversity, concerning uh, the Mediterranean biodiversity, and uh, that you, you can write together, hold together, some point in one page. Uh, this is the question is not to, to, to say us to us that uh, we must uh, stop the pollution, we must uh, stop climate uh, change. No, I want that you. You can say us uh, how, uh, how you, you uh, what do you expect from uh, biodiversity? How do you imagine the relationship between a young scientist, for example? Uh, how you imagine the collaboration between a laboratory? And, uh, for example, if you think that this kind of workshop is a good thing, but perhaps you can say no. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing or not. Uh, but I think that as a young scientist, you have some idea about you know, more the future of the Mediterranean and the future of the research concerning Mediterranean area. You can uh, think about this uh, short text during uh, the dinner, after the dinner. <laughs> and, I think, <laughs> and I think perhaps that tomorrow morning, at, at the end of the session, one of you can uh, explain to us this uh, recommendation. Yeah. They can be publicized. Yeah. As a net quotes by yourself or of the watcher. Okay. Thank you very much for.